Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, we'll be getting ethylene glycol from things you can find at the store. Um, ethylene glycol looks like this, it's very basic. Systematic name is 1,2-ethanediol. It's a useful precursor for a lot of different chemical compounds, and it's used as both a solvent and a reactant in a lot of different uh, reactions that I plan to do in upcoming videos. So I figured I'd make a little video on how to get it, which turns out is pretty easy. The easiest way to get ethylene glycol is to simply look at the store for automotive antifreeze. And usually the cheaper stuff is the best kind of stuff to use. You want to get the undiluted antifreeze, which doesn't contain water. And if you look at the back here, the ingredients contains, there it says, contains ethylene glycol, diethylene glycol, sodium 2 ethyl hexanoate, and sodium neodecanoate. And if you look up all those components, you'll find that ethylene glycol has the lowest boiling point out of all of them by about 40 degrees. So we should be able to easily distill the ethylene glycol out of this antifreeze. If you also look at the MSDS, you'll see that almost 90% of this is the ethylene glycol. So it's a very good source for it, and it's also very cheap. I think this was $7. So this video is also going to cover some of the basic aspects of simple distillation, which is pretty much what we're going to use to, to isolate this ethylene glycol. Now this is sort of borderline between simple distillation and fractional distillation because Fractional distillation is technically used to separate compounds at different boiling points, and since these compounds in the antifreeze have different boiling points, it's technically fractional distillation. But since we're since ninety percent of it is ethylene glycol, and since the boiling point distribution is is rather wide, we can actually isolate most of the ethylene glycol using simple distillation only. So I'm not going to get into fractional distillation with this video particularly. So I've set up here for simple distillation. And this is pretty complicated for a simple distillation rig. Typically, a distillation rig just has a boiling flask and then some sort of adapter that allows the boiling flask to be connected to a condenser. And of course, the condenser is just a tube that has a water jacket around it, which keeps it cool. And uh, so things boil, and then the vapor flows into the condenser, where it condenses into back into a liquid. And then uh, this adapter here drips it into whatever your collection container happens to be. But I've added this piece in here, um, which will allow me to pour more ethylene glycol in this case, or ethylene glycol and the other crud solution, into here to keep more and more coming out, right? So I can refill this halfway through the reaction as long as I'm careful about the thermal shock on this flask. So I've also got another fancy piece of equipment here, this lab jack. Now this isn't super necessary either, but I like it because it gives you a lot better heat control on this flask. If, for instance, this is boiling and it's getting too hot and you're starting to foam into the condenser, right, that's going to be bad. So what you're going to want to do is turn the heat down. So you turn the heat off, pretend, but the problem is this heating mantle has a lot of residual heat in it, and so you'll continue to heat, and there'll be a lag behind your control input. So the easiest way to stop that is to simply lower the lab jack, and well, if this clamp was <laughs> tighter, this would actually pull away from the flask, and once you have an air gap between the flask and the mantle, uh, you stop heating it, ne not nearly as much anyway, on a very rapid basis. So that's helpful to control reactions. So again, not really necessary. You can use wood blocks if you want to or you can use this uh, lab jack. You can see here that the mixture has been dyed, and we're going to remove that dye as well. I'm only going to fill the flask just under three quarters of the way up, because I don't want this to foam up and potentially boil into the condenser. There are a couple other aspects of simple distillation that you should take into consideration before you attempt it yourself, and I'm going to go over a couple of those here. Um, number one is to have some method of preventing bumping. Now, bumping is when the liquid overheats locally, and then when a small nucleation begins, a lot of bubbles form at once, and the cycle sort of repeats, and so you get big foaming up frothy bubbles, followed by periods of almost no bubbles, and of course that's, uh, that's bad because a lot of times it'll shoot the liquid up into your condenser. Sometimes it, be, it can be so violent that it'll separate the joints of your apparatus, and of course that's not good. So an easy way to prevent this is to simply use a stir bar in the bottom or some boiling chips, and uh, the problem pretty much goes away for most liquids. Another thing you want to do is, uh, of course, hook up the water to your condenser and make sure it's on. 
crack this here. Don't need much flow through this because ethylene glycol is a pretty high boiling liquid, so there's a, it's not going to take much to condense it, so perhaps less than that. My water's free because I'm on a well, so I have like a half horse uh, electric pump that supplies me with unlimited free water, and it costs me a lot less money than if I were hooked up to city water. Anyway, so the line, the water line there comes from that valve and runs up here, it gets hooked up to the bottom of the condenser, always water in down here and water out up here, that way you have a much colder region here and it gradually gets warmer as you get to the top. It's just good practice, there's a lot of reasons behind that. The collection jar, nothing too special about this, I've just got it stood up on blocks so the drop doesn't have to fall nearly as far. I think like I will pick up water from the atmosphere so it's probably best to do to keep it in close proximity I guess. And then I guess the last aspect is taking the temperature of what's coming over. Now typically you'd have a thermometer adapter up here and the thermometer would extend down and the bulb would be pretty much even with where the vapors get taken off. I have here this special thermometer well. It's like a test tube essentially. And that sits down in there like that and what I use is even though I have a lot of thermometers sometimes they're hard to read. So I have this digital thermocouple probe and a uh, a type K thermocouple here, which is accurate to pretty much you know, 2 degrees C, so as long as you're not doing fractional distillation, this works out well. Um, and also, it'd probably work for, for fractional distillation too, but you just have to calibrate it, basically. Anyway, so this just gets stuck down in there, and you can see it It sits a little bit low, and ends up sitting right about there, but it, it's within 2 or 3 degrees of what I want to distill, and it works pretty well. So yeah, then I can simply turn it on, it'll calibrate itself for a second, and then uh, I'll be able to digitally monitor from a distance the temperature at which the distillate's coming over, which helps me do other things during long distillations. So there we go. We are now finally ready to turn on the heat. And uh, yeah, pretty soon the ethylene glycol will start boiling out of there. Yeah, you can see now that the ethylene glycol is starting to boil out of the solution, and it's just now getting up into this upper tube here. And of course our thermocouple hasn't had time to catch up because this front moves really fast, so we're at 125 and climbing very rapidly. 129, 30, and 31, so that should probably stop somewhere around 200. This may be a little wet, so the ethylene glycol coming off may be somewhere between 100 and 200. But water is not a problem for a lot of the experiments I'm doing with this, and I would generally dry before an experiment anyway, so I'm not going to feature that in this video. Well, it's been five or six hours, and I've distilled most of the glycol over. You can see um, all the impurities have been concentrated in the bottom there. I can turn the stirrer off, you might be able to see the color of that a little bit better. But anyway, I've collected just over 500 milliliters of reasonably pure ethylene glycol from about $1.50 worth of antifreeze. So even if there is glycol still left in here, I'm not going to be too sad about throwing it away. This has been showing 198-ish Celsius for several hours, which is indicative of pure glycol coming off. That's good. Um, one thing that could have made this go faster is if this column was shorter, but I felt the need that, to uh, potentially add more glycol as I went, but I think that the 550 milliliters I've collected should be sufficient. Um, I also melted a couple of my cat clips. Um, they're apparently not uh, well suited for sitting for six hours at temperatures of about 200 Celsius. But anyway, I'll be using this glycol in a bunch of upcoming videos, which I hope you'll be around to watch. So uh, yeah, please subscribe. And uh, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button, and thanks for watching.